Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the Umineko playthrough. Yeah, I think we're starting this story today with a very good line. <laughs> I mean, my god. When do you ever get to start a visual novel story and, you know, have it say, we've had way too much to drink, I love it. So, um, yeah, I'm actually really quite excited for today. I don't know what we're going to be seeing. We're going to see how, um, you know, Toya and Ikuko, you know, we're going to be seeing their mysterious story. And we're also going to be seeing... Um, I suppose everything about the beginning of the battle between uh, Butler and Car, that would be what I'd assume is going to happen. Or maybe we're going to see all of the real-life events of, you know, the shocking impact of uh, having revealed the truth. I do wonder because, um, you know, there is quite a lot that um, we need to cover and quite a lot that we've got to read. And I just hope that Yukishi does what he does best, you know, gets really good ideas and makes them as good as possible really takes every single piece of potential and smashes it so yeah i really hope so and i think the best example for this is higurashi chapter six or umineko episode four. Oh my god or umineko episode six to be honest there, there are just so many i can think of higurashi chapter three. Oh my god yeah anyway um <clears throat> Let's get into this. Ah, yeah, I love this line. We must have had way too much to drink. Before I knew it, I must have passed out on the subject. Jesus Christ. Yeah, you have drunk too much. Jesus. Yeah, before I knew it, I may have passed out on the sofa. There was a blanket covering me. Ikrosan must have put it there. Yeah. The lights are out in the study, but it wasn't dark. Oh, I see. The computer's monitor was glowing. A computer? Wait. I thought she was totally anti-computer. Well, then again, I mean, she doesn't do writing with a computer, but that doesn't mean she doesn't have a computer. Outside, it has started to rain. By the way, this is an insanely early time for having a computer. That's actually really quite surprising, especially a computer that has a monitor. Well, then again, I don't know what time this actually is in. Maybe it could be late 1990s. Outside, it has started to rain. It reminded me of the day Ikuko-san found me and took me in. Oh, I see. God, yeah, that's weird, yeah. Yeah, that so speaks trauma to me, at least. Yeah, because of that, whenever it rains, I find myself wondering who I was. I usually get headaches. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, so I wasn't sure whether the pain was because of the rain or because I drank too much. Yeah, that's understandable. Wow, look at this really weird tint from the lamp. I like it. Yeah, it just really, it really gives you the impression that well, I mean, obviously, I think everything else is a little bit too bright for this impression to fully be given. But um, it gives you the impression of, you know, lights not being off, but at the same time, nothing being that dark. Ikuko-san, turn on the lights. Using a computer in the dark is bad for your eyes. Yeah, fair enough. She probably didn't want to wake her. Oh, did I wake you up? No, I slept well. I feel refreshed now. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I turned on the light and looked out through the gap in the curtains. By the way, I am really interested to see how chapters like this in the manga are actually portrayed with obviously mystery characters. As I thought, it was a sort of pouring rain that had always reminded me of that day. Yeah, that is interesting. Wait, I've just got an idea. Oh my god. Right, that's actually really interesting to think about the fact that they remember a lot when they actually think about the rain. Twilight, maybe? Umineko's Twilight? Oh my god. Could this actually be the case? Oh my god, I think... I might be onto something, but at the same time, I don't know. Then again, though, we don't know what the truth is actually like. Maybe this could potentially be somebody who was... Maybe some sort of young kid. Maybe Jessica or George or some, someone like that who has somehow survived. I don't get why it would be Jessica, though, but George, maybe. I don't know. It's hard to tell. It's raining pretty hard out there. The wind looks pretty strong too. Yeah. I hope the rain gutters don't get clogged with leaves again. Oh god, that's the worst. <laughs> oh, that's good, yeah. Yeah, that must be a pain. Yeah, I just cleaned them the other day. You just cleaned them? I'm genuinely surprised that she did it and her servants haven't done it. I just cleaned them the other day so they should be fine for a while. Her answer sounded a little bit abstracted. Apparently her attention was absorbed by the computer. Oh my god. <laughs> That's interesting. I wonder what she's actually looking at. Could be anything. 
even um, pretty hurt by the computer lately, Ik Gosa. Did you find an interesting article or something? Oh, I see. Yeah, maybe a bit juvenile, but it's still pretty interesting. Maybe this is actually the beginning of Toya actually, sorry, Ikko actually finding mystery stories that have relevance and, you know, beginning to adapt them in her own way and writing them. Well, not mystery stories, real life events that have happened. It may be a bit juvenile, but it's still pretty interesting. Oh, I'm actually really quite surprised. It's about that Dokkenjima incident. Dokkenjima? Dokkenjima mystery no hanashiwa senjitsu shita desho? Yeah, that's actually really interesting about the fact that this person has some sort of epiphany at the word Dokenjima. I told you about the Dokenjima mystery a few days ago, remember? Yeah, it's been really huge on the net lately. I'm actually quite surprised that this is 1983. Sorry, six. But still, um, the discussions, theories, and even the forgeries have been quite entertaining. Oh, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Forgeries are stories all based on the premise that um, yet another message bottle signed by Ushidomi and Maria existed and dry drifted to one of the nearby islands. Ikiko kept on showing off her knowledge of the subject. Oh god. Yeah, that is interesting. So whatever's happened here, I could assume it's a big connection to Doc Enjima, so, you know, it's obvious that this is a family member, so obvious question is who? Ikko, she kept on showing off her knowledge of the subject. However, a huge bell was clanging inside my head. Yeah, that's... Jesus Christ. That's insane. The noise was so great that I thought my head would split open. Fucking hell. Unable to tell what was the floor and what was it. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's really weird. Hmm, I've, got, I've got some... Oh no, it's not my glasses. Um, unable to tell what was the floor and what was the ceiling, I crumbled and clutched on my head. That's insane. Toya, are you okay? Yeah, my head... No, that is properly weird. I mean, that is a proper headache. Fucking hell. And that is a proper just... Yeah, I really do wonder what this person is actually thinking, and it is interesting to think about when Doc Enjima is actually mentioned, you know, she gets the biggest headache of all. And I mean, if that's not suggestive of the fact that she has a connection, I don't know what is. The Doc Enjima explosion accident. The many disquieting rumours surrounding it. Yeah, 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 seriously, yeah, the scheming of the relatives who were after Ushidomi Akinzo's vast wealth and the hidden gold. Yeah, and the truth. Oh, yeah, 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 Ushidomi at Eva, the, the sole survivor, said nothing. Eventually, everything would be inherited by the granddaughter, Ushidomi at Anji, who escaped to harm because she was absent back on that day. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Anji, Anji, Ushidomi at Anji. I am Ushidomi at... Yeah, I knew it. But... Oh, that's really weird. Mmm, my god, that's insane. No good, my head's getting split out. Jesus fucking Christ, I mean... I just genuinely can't believe that if you try to remember even who you are, you get a pain as ridiculous as this. I mean, how horrible is that? It's just really weird. Obviously, you can think nothing of, you know, nothing apart from the question of what the fuck has happened to this person. And what did this person do? I mean, why does the fact that they're in Ushidomiya bring loads of trauma to them? Oh, yeah, that's really weird. Incomprehensible scenes pierce my eyelids from the inside like blades of light. I see. Yeah, that's really... Oh my god. So, they're probably remembering everything here. Just what am I looking at? Yeah, every single memory of the Dokenjima Mansion. Just what am I looking at? Who are these people calling to me? Yeah, yeah, but not by the name Toya. She should know all of them. I mean, these... I am Ushidomiya. You know... They literally mention the fact that they are family. Hang on a second. Isn't it interesting to think that... I think the only Ushidomiya family member that wasn't shown there was Kirie, I think. Battler. Could you imagine if this is Battler? Who am I? Who are these people? Oh my god. If this is Battler, that is going to be really quite something. I mean, obviously we knew in episode 3 he died, but that doesn't necessarily mean in the truth he died. Who am I? Who are these people? What is this memory? Help me, Ikuko. Oh god. Yeah, that's awful. That is awful to think that, you know, these, you know, 
the trauma of the incident has made it so that this person has so little memory that, you know, they feel as if the past self they had is someone else. But I, I do kind of see why you could logically debate that. Someone else's memory is hurting me. My head's splitting. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I didn't see Battler there. That is interesting. Hmm. That's really weird. So whatever's actually happening here, this person's having a proper nightmarish time. I could hear the sorrowful sound of the wind, and that must be... Oh my god, who was I again? I am Ishidomiya. Please, please, say... What? Hang on, what? Voices, voices calling to me. Dad and mum, it can't be. 1996 this is really weird. You're not going to tell me that the actual culprit was Angie. I just genuinely don't understand though. I mean, it is interesting that Angie has actually been able to escape everything because of the fact that, you know, she has been away from the incident. But are you telling me that she's been able to escape from the incident yet at the same time she is actually 12 years older than she was proclaimed to be? Is she actually Basila's twin sister or something like that? I don't know. Or are they the same age, if they're not twin sisters? Uh, twin siblings, even. What the fuck? This is just... This is really odd. I just can't believe this. Does this necessarily suggest... I mean, then again, she doesn't actually... Like, how does she not know anybody, and then she recognises this people as her parents? I mean, the fact that she's forgotten her entire family and herself. I mean, how can you remember... How can you necessarily assume that they are your parents? I mean, I don't really get that. But then again, this is such a treasured memory, so it would make sense as to why this would be the case. But then again, what if these are mere family members instead of... Well, then again, how do you explain Angie then? Oh my god, it's just weird. I don't know. It, it's really odd. I could feel my body being lifted up firmly and hugged roughly. Mum and dad were hugging. That's really weird. The fact that she's probably being seeing... She's probably... It's as if she's being projected this scene. My eyelids have been open for a while now. I can feel the light slowly returning to my eyes. Oh, I see. Just like your eyes get used to the dark, my eyes got used to the light, and bit by bit, the scene around me came into view. Yeah, that is weird. Why are they in the Golden Land? What? However, it, yeah, seriously, it was an unusual sight, which seemed to be very far away. My body was being hugged by Dad and Mum. God, yeah, Dad was sniffling, his face covered with tears. There were tears in Mum's eyes too, as she held me tight. It was so strong that it hurt a bit. Yeah, that is weird. I just genuinely wonder what has actually happened here. It was so strong that it hurt a bit. It held me with all their strength. That does kind of sound like what Angie, when she was young, would do. Me, the bad kid who wasn't obedient, who always had an excuse, and who always tried to do the opposite of what her parents said. Isn't it interesting to think about the fact that she is remembering so much just from a really significant moment, but actually remembering the moment? I mean, to be fair, no matter how much of a significant moment, you've got to, it's just remembering stuff is completely luck based. It's just whether you have the right triggers for actually, you know, well, I don't know, making your brain contemplate things that would actually remember these certain facts. I mean, it's unbelievable. It really is. Yeah, that is actually really interesting. Oh, it's all of them. That's really odd. As my eyes adjusted, I could see other people beside my parents. Yeah, why? Yeah. Everyone was there. George on Yi-chan, Jessica on their chan Maria on their chan That's so weird. And these three, what? My uncles and aunts. Even, hang on a second, what the fuck? Even Sakutaro. Hang on a second, I'm just seriously confused. And there was the witch about a giddy yard on there and... Oh, yeah. 
Oh, that's properly brutal. So what they've actually done is they've really subtly made it so that the scene has changed. Oh, I, I can't say I like that the most, but at the same time, that is just a properly good way to trick somebody. Oh my god, this game messes with you. Oh my god, yeah, that's insane. Yeah, no, I just totally see that now. Yeah. God, that's awful. Isn't that actually really interesting to think that somehow she has been returned here? I just genuinely don't understand how. I mean, she's been saved from death so many times that it shouldn't be a surprise that she's saved here. But still, it is! So I at first thought the, um, you know, memory of this really, really traumatized person was, um, you know, who had a memory that was surrounding the rain and, um, you know, everything that happened in Nokenjima. I just wonder, um, you know, what, what the link is potentially. Yeah, that's awful. I mean, obviously, they're totally hugging Angie because of the fact that, you know, now she has done the wrong path anyway. And I think the most awful thing about Angie is she never had any hope to begin with because she was always fated to die. But at least you could die happily, I suppose. I don't know. Yeah, that is really weird. Hmm, where? You were fortunate. That's unbelievable. So that's Lambda's miracle, I'd assume. Wow. Yeah, by chance, we found you drifting in the waves of the Sea of Emptiness. The Sea of Emptiness, Jesus. You were in a terrible state. That's actually really interesting how that kind of links within, um, you know, the Toya person. It took quite some time to make you remember your true form. Beatrice. So this is... Yeah, that's unbelievable! Oh, I think that is so sweet. Yeah, this is properly why you make it so that your resolve is clear. Because Lambda... I mean, I think it's just genuinely insane to that. I'm really interested to hear about Lambda's views on this situation. Yeah, your whole family has been waiting here for you to return. Yeah, we knew you would come home. Yeah, yeah, did I come home because I was supposed to, you weren't supposed to, you were supposed to have died in that library and, you know, just be reduced to scrap, mate. But no. Yeah. I've gone back to how I was supposed to be, and now... No, you did come home. So yeah. That's right. Fair enough, yeah. You made it back here because you wanted to come home to us. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And I, I just think it is so nice that, you know, at the end of her journey, I mean, even though it's been the most... a journey of unexplainable tragedy, like, you know, she has actually been able to be reunited with these people. It's brilliant, but... I mean, obviously, this is the worst thing. It's such a brilliant thing, but at the same time, it's so sad at the same... Uh, yeah. Oh, my, my. God, yeah. I really wonder what they're going to say. You don't need to say anything. Oh, yeah. Terrible. Yeah, you've been on a great and terrible journey, haven't you? Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. I mean, if these parents could just... If Afterlife actually existed... And these parents were just looking down on Angie and, you know, how their deaths has affected her. I mean, my God, they would be, yeah, unimaginable feelings, really. You understand now, don't you? Oh, I feel so bad, yeah. You won't forget again. I understand that. That is interesting. This is the place you can always call home. I know. Hmm. I mean, I don't really think necessarily that you can think of the Golden Land as home, but at the same time, you can think of it as home because of the fact that you literally have the opportunity to interact with the pieces on the game board that represent your parents. 
You want to give the answer to dad and mum hug me again? Yeah, yeah, understandable. They care about her so much. Yeah, hot tears fell onto my face. They were dad and mum's to- Yeah! Oh my god. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, that is going to be emotional for Angie talking to Eva. I wonder if she actually understands about everything regarding what Eva tried to do for her now that she actually knows the truth. I can tell by looking that you're far from Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I'm so glad. Glad you came home. Aunt Eva. God, I want her. Feel hate me as much as you want. Yeah, give your dad and mom a million kisses. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just so horrible to think that Eva, unbelievably, has cared about Angie. Some of the, has literally cared about Angie and probably one of the most important ways, but she's just genuinely never been able to see it. Yeah, I give a kiss to anyone who cares about you so much. Aunt Eva. Yeah. What? Yeah, and say I'm home to your other mother. What do you mean? Like, oh yeah, I see how you could actually consider Eva as the other mother. Yeah, mum gave me a push from behind and I stumbled forwards. Towards my other mother. Yeah. That is interesting. I mean, she so deserves to be called that. But at the same time, I mean, it's just such a... Such a hard view, really. And it's so ambiguous. Because the thing is, I mean, a lot of the things that Eva did that, you know, if she wasn't very bereaved, that would be very wrong, but you can't forget about the fact that she was totally bereaved. I mean, look at, for example, just how much, you know, I'll never forget the stuff about her just constantly trying to impose a standard of George onto Angie and, you know, just totally treating her like a reject because she was just so, you know, bereaved about having lost everyone. And, I mean, the thing is about that, I mean, it's horrible, but at the same time, like, it is something that, you know, people would naturally do when they really are feeling grief. And that's just the most horrible thing. And I suppose Eva kind of put on the facade of, you know, making Angie hate her so that she wouldn't trust her enough to hack, you know, to ask the truth, really, that which would totally ruin her life. I mean, even though it, even though it was just totally ruined anyway. It's, it's so fucking tricky, it really is. Oh, my fuck. Jesus. Yeah, if only I call your mum on that day. But then again, this is the thing. I mean, you were. I mean, it's so understandable. This is the worst thing. I mean, there are obviously regrets from stuff like this, but they are so understandable. Like how you would actually feel on that day. I mean, yeah, if only I call your mum on that day. Yeah, that's that's the most awful thing, you know, to think about the fact that if these people had a good relationship, she would be alive right now and she would be living a happy life. And I mean, obviously, her entire family has died, but, you know, she would have been able to actually cope with it rather than, you know, just having completely ruined existence as a result of it, like with no light whatsoever. <laughs> Yeah, that's so understandable, yeah. Yeah, we might have been able to create a new world together. Yeah. No, I see that. Yeah, you've come home. Oh, no, I just find it so sad. Just how much these people love each other. I mean, how, how, ever, how much Eva loves Angie, even. Let me just correct my speech there. God. 
Vanessa. Mm, I think it's so... I mean, it is just really sad that this never could have happened when they were actually living, but... You know, the fact that it can happen, and the fact that they have actually had... I mean, even though this moment is totally illusionary and fake, the fact that they've actually had a moment to, you know, just properly talk to each other with this understanding of love that obviously Andrew has, has received from the... Tr oh my god, I just genuinely can't imagine what she must be feeling after having read her diary. You know, I mean, just... I think the total feeling of the fact that your life is an entire lie, and, you know, if you had treated everything better, and if you had viewed everything with a different look then, you know, you would have been able to actually live a good one. It's oh, horrible. And, it's a... and, like, the thing is, I mean, obviously the tragedy of her life is horrible, but, and then you actually add the fact that she could have lived a good life and it was all preventable and none of it needed to happen. That's the worst thing. And this is why, you know, this is why Higadashi got to me so much, just, you know, with a lot of situations, just the brutality, the, the sheer brutality and sometimes the preventability of the situations as well but more the brutality of the situations the brutality of small mistakes that lead to big problems yeah welcome home Angie chan <laughs> no, I, I, I see that yeah you're my adorable daughter and it's just so weird to think about how much they love each other just totally see how um yeah she was sure but she never realized it and until the end you're my closest friend yeah oh my god at least they have had this opportunity to make up with each other seriously it's just yeah the two of them hugged each other quietly burying their faces in the other's shoulders and sobbing yeah understandable yeah the truth wasn't worth anything at all in the first place, the truth is always in the past. Oh yeah, understandable, but if the past changes the future as much as it can with Angie, holy fuck. The point of the future isn't to learn what happened in the past. Oh, well, I suppose it's to learn from it. Yeah. What really matters is whether I can truly live and prosper in the truth that is the now. Yeah, that's understandable, yeah. If I truly live and prosper, that is the truth. Back when I only ever tried to see the truth of the past. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I totally see that. And, you know, that really links the genius metaphor of Angie only being stuck in a body of a six-year-old. Yeah, I was nothing more than a ghost trapped in the past. I see that, yeah, since that time I haven't lived a single... Yeah, that's horrible. Now I truly understand. This is what the... Yeah, she does truly understand. I will live. Yeah, yeah and... It's really interesting to think that she has actually understood Battler's lessons as a result of having known the truth. Yeah, so it's as if she's got the best of both worlds, really. Yes, you obviously get all of the lessons that Battler takes from you, and you and you get the truth. But the only thing is, obviously, there can never be happiness, there can never be anything good in her life, because she's it's going to end. And that is the most brutal thing. I will live, and I've remembered how much everyone loved me. God, yeah. Yeah, seriously, because I was young and selfish, I didn't even remember until now. Oh my god, I know. I know, that's insane. The kind grandpa who always spoiled me. The kind. Yeah, the entertaining aunts and uncles. I mean, obviously, they all have bad sides. <laughs> Fucking baby killer. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, um, you know. I can see how they'd be entertaining people. All of the kind and gentle servants. Well, then again, about the whole baby killing stuff, did she really kill the baby in the truth? I wonder. All of the kind and gentle servants. Oh, that's actually really interesting to think about the fact that that Shannon and Kanon aren't actually displayed on the same screen here. Yeah, it was always one. Oh my god, I know, I know, I know, and that's the worst thing. That's the worst thing. She could have never remembered it because it's just interesting because it really tells you something that's applicable to anyone's life, really. You can't take stuff for advantage and granted because, you know, it may never be there and you can never confirm whether it will be there or not. Like, one day it will be there and then the other it won't. Yeah, yeah because I was young and cruel, I never tried to remember any of that. Yeah, I do see that and it's just so horrible to think that as a result of that. It's just insane to think that the first six years of her life you know, her not remembering anything, not remembering any of the love, especially of Aunt Eva. You know, that has just made it so that everything has been totally ruined. I mean, my god, when I read 
episode 3 again. Jesus Christ, am I going to see it differently? Well, I'll, I'll read the manga, so... Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's fully understandable because this person is only a kid at the time. Yeah, and everything got distorted by my irresponsible imagination. And I completely forgot the truth. Yeah, that's the worst thing, yeah. Now I can remember clearly and I understand. Yeah, that Halloween quiz party suddenly was an illusion. Yeah, yeah, but and at the same time though, this is what it was aiming to achieve. It was aiming to achieve the amount of love that was present here in Angie. I wonder what Battler's going to say by the way everyone apart from Battler has talked to Angie, I swear. It never happened. <laughs> However, didn't we do all kinds of things, fun things when the relatives gathered? Yeah, yeah, de yeah, 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 definitely things that were no more or less fun than that party. Yes, that's the horrible answer. That really is. Wow. Oh my god, that's going to be quite something. God. It is just truly unbelievable. I mean, obviously it's good that they've had this opportunity, but it's just horrible to think that, you know, you just have the most tragic ending with, you know, ever dying a miserable person. Same for Angie. Well, more than miserable. I mean, at least Eva actually got to live a life. Angie never got to. Because, like she said, she was always stuck in the past, really. It's fully understandable, though. God, water tastes so much better in winter. Or just autumn time. Or just colder weather in general, really. Oh, my God. This water is so nice. Like, seriously. And it's just so awful to think about the fact that she's learning these lessons now. She's not lessing, learning them when she's there in 1986 or um, 1986 to 1998. She's learning them now when she's suicided. It's insane, that. And for the first time since the start of the game. Yeah, I went up to each and every one of them. To greet them, thank them, and apologize. God, yeah. To thank Grandpa for always pampering me. Understandable, yeah. To thank my aunts and uncles. To thank the cousins for um, always playing me, even though I was so selfish. Oh, God, yeah, I know. I mean, I don't really think she was selfish when she was a kid. But still, to be nice to a kid, it's really good of them. Yeah, and I thanked and apologized to the illusions. Oh, yeah, 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 I wouldn't be surprised, yeah, especially I can think of the scene where, you know, obviously everything just got way, oh my god, that horrible, horrible scene, you know, where they had just quite literally forced her to do after class studying because of the fact that her grades were bringing down the class average, and then, you know, she just was totally being slandered by these bastards, and, you know, she tried to get the seven sex of purgatory to completely kill them, <laughs> they kind of did deserve to be killed, can't deny I think I said sorry, I think it's not horrible to suck that all once in the past. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, definitely. And to Mario on their charm, too. Yeah, I mean, obviously, illusionarily, but still. Mario on their charm, you really were a witch, weren't you? Yeah, I've always been a witch. It's just really interesting to think about how. Just her sense of identity, really. I've always been a witch. Yeah, definitely. You approached that left with yourself once, didn't you? No. I never really understood. Pitiful Mario on their charm with her pitiful magic. 
Yeah, that, that is fully fair enough. And that is the logical thought that a lot of people would have thought. I mean, I obviously thought that when I saw episode four. Oh my god. The meaning of her, you know, you, you, onomatopoeia. I'm sorry, I, I don't like saying it like she does. It's just so awkward. That's all I thought of. Hmm. You told me that yourself once on your show. Can't be a no, seriously, I don't disagree. It takes two to create a universe. Hmm. Yeah, that's fair. I have Beato, but you were all alone. No. Yeah, no, I don't disagree, actually, yeah. yeah. If I had called on Eva our mum, there would have been two of us. Yeah, that's fair. That really is fair. Yeah, I'm sure I would have been able to create a new world with the same magic you used, Maria on God, that's horrible. All of it is my fault. That is interesting. The message bottles I threw away half jokingly distorted your future and wore you down. That's actually really quite interesting, that about responsibility to that. Yeah, that really is quite something. And I mean, then again, I mean. Yeah, I suppose because of the fact that they really increased the amount of conspiracy that the incident actually had. And obviously, everything that happened. Um, yeah, that is really interesting that she feels as if the entire blame is because of the message bottles. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because of that, people started copying you and making forgeries. Yeah, growing the story into something crazy. Hmm. Yeah. However, the message bottles thrown away by Beato did not name a specific person as the culprit. Mm. Yeah, that's understandable, and that's the worst thing. Those forgeries. Yeah, that's awful. Now, isn't that just really interesting to think that this would have been any old murder case? It would have been a very unusual one, but, you know, there wouldn't have been nearly as many conspiracies if it wasn't for the forgeries. Yeah, and that's the worst thing. That line on the screen is why that is a conspiracy-related nightmare. Yeah, one of the forgers wrote a plausible forgery that had Ushidomiya ever as the culprit, and it spread like a wildfire. And this is the worst thing, because obviously, because it spreads like a wildfire, she probably thought of it may have validity. Who knows? Yeah, even though I should have known better than anyone else that it was impossible. Yeah, I accepted it in the end, and that's because of the fact that you just view Eva with, you know, a view without love, and then, you know, obviously the relationship yeah, distorts into the worst possible amount, really. Yeah, it isn't your fault, Bertha. Mm. No, I totally see that. Yeah, there should have been. I mean, yeah, no matter how many people were around me, I had baseless suspicions. There should have been only one truth inside me. And yeah, yeah, she shouldn't have let her truth be completely changed and completely altered by other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the horrible thing. And yet, so easily, I abandoned my warm memories of you all. Yeah. And surrendered my heart to them. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. I can see how she would surrender her heart, because obviously, you know, 
you suspect somebody is your family and then you suspect family is your culprit and then boom your life just goes downhill and more and more downhill yeah Look at how young Angie was. I think it's more Beatrice's fault entirely. Or Yasuda's fault. Yeah. I had not thrown away the message bottles. The future of Rokenjima would never have... Yeah, never have um, become the centre of such bizarre misconceptions. No, I do see that though. Yeah. I bear responsibility for it all. True. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't disagree because obviously without Beatrice and the message bottles, there never would have been any truth that could have potentially tainted Angie's truth. That's right. It really is your fault after all. Put that way, it's a little irritating. I mean, yeah, this is not a this is not a funny situation. I don't get why you're being so uh jokingly provoked, but okay. But that way it's a little irritating. You do have your share of the blame as well. Yeah, exactly, I agree. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, fair, yeah. Yeah, you're right. You were at fault and so was I. Still, it would be stupid for us to attack each other. Hmm. After all, I'm a witch of the future. No, I do see that. Yeah, she is the witch of 1986 and Angie is the witch of everything after. I see that. I should be using that magic to build my future. Yeah, yeah, we both bear responsibility in some way. Yeah. To be honest, I think that is an incredibly kind way of viewing it. I think Beatrice is entirely... have She entirely has the right to blame for, you know, not considering what the awful nature of the, message, the messages in the bottles could actually have on somebody's life. But then again, though, I mean, the messages in the bottles. Do you really blame Beatrice because of Yasuda and everything regarding her? You know, you've got to think about the fact that this was, um, you know, these were originally just love letters to Basuda to, you know, increase the understanding of the story. She's probably, once she's actually killed everybody. Um, well, then again, though, what if Yasuda isn't the culprit? Oh, I don't know. Let's assume she is. But, um, you know, she throws the message bottles away because she's probably just so angry with the futility of everything and the fact that he's actually returned. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I knew you'd be able to understand Mariel Sorciera's teachings, Angie. That's right. Hmm. As the final member of Mariel Sorciera, it's my responsibility to pass on Onei Chan's magic. No, it's interesting that if if Angie had actually followed Maria's magic just a little bit more, then, you know, she she so could have been able to actually make it up with Eva, and she could have actually been able to understand her. That's just the most horrible thing. My magic can make everyone happy. No, I don't disagree. Indeed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't disagree. Yeah, you can be the happiest person ever, but then you can obviously use your trauma to create some of the most horrible magic and rage, obviously. You know, trauma from your shitty upbringing. Yeah, you have both pure magic and wicked magic at your fingertips. That's true. Yeah, can, yeah. Magic can completely change depending on your heart. No, seriously, yeah, if you aren't properly guided, you can't use magic properly. Yeah. And proper magic can bring people happiness. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It is a wonderful thing. Yeah, it is interesting to think. Oh, that so relates to Kumasawa. I love it. It is a wonderful thing. Bringing people happiness is the sole reason that witches wield magic. Fair. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, it's weird to think about the fact that Angie is the final witch, but I can just totally see why. 
Yeah, it is a wonderful thing. Bringing people happiness is the sole reason that witches wield magic. Hmm. I am very pleased to know that those teachings have been passed down through the endless witches, all the way to the final witch. Yeah. God, sorry for failing to pass it down myself. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, yeah, I mean, then again though, to be fair, I mean, Yasuda's magic has to- well, Yasuda's teachings of magic have totally been able to actually inspire Anji, no, sorry, Mariga, who has then been able to inspire Anji and, you know, maybe make it so that she can look for happiness in her own life, but obviously it failed, but it had the possibility of potentially changing it for her, which is the future Anji Beatrice. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, she deserves that, I can see that. Yeah, which of the future, Angie Beatrice. I will now retract your expulsion from Maria Sorciera. Yeah, and it totally makes sense as to why she was actually expelled to begin with. Hmm. Oh, it's like Yeah, fair enough, I knew Angie would come back. Oh my god, that must be big for her. Congratulations, Anji-sama. Oh my god, I know you just denied it like it wasn't even anything. Yeah, I thought I knew what the time we spent travelling together meant. And yet I... Sorry, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah fair. Yeah, witches cannot create a universe unless there are two. Yeah, no, I do see that because obviously she is just fated to floating down in the deep and endless sea. Whether she is actually going to be, um, you know, fully in her form, you know, a human form. Is she just going to be scraps of meat or is she actually going to be a human form? Where is her soul even going to be? What is she going to see? What's going to happen? You know, which is cannot create a universe unless there are two. In the future, you will be alone. Will you really be okay? Yeah, I'll be okay. Hmm, not alone anymore. Oh, yeah, I see that. Yeah, yeah, I'll be okay. I'm not alone anymore. I'll be with everyone. God, yeah, yeah, and I'll live in the future. I swear to keep living so that I can pass on the magic of Mario Sosiera. Yeah, I can see how it would save Yasuda as well. Yeah, Mario Onetan's magic saved me too. Oh, yeah. Everybody has injustices or sad things or just in general really awful means of actually, you know, ruining their life. So they do, I see that. There are a lot of people out there who need magic. Seriously though, yeah. As a final witch of Mariel Sosier. Yeah, that's really nice. It's my duty to teach it the right way and save as many people as I can. You, will you truly be able to do so? I do find it really interesting that Battler has deliberately gone out. I wonder if he actually predicted this. Of course, I had the power to do it. Yeah. Yeah, there's the golden magic that my predecessor, Eva Beatrice, Spent so much time building. I've inherited all of that, right? And that's interesting that she's saying golden magic is that. Oh my god, you are talking as if you actually have a life out after this. Uh, when's she going to realise? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if she actually had a life and she hadn't jumped off that building, then what she would have done is, um, you know, she would have been able to... Um, you know, just all, use all of the gold. She wouldn't obviously manipulate people with money if she wants to teach the good in Mariel Sorciera. What she would do is she'd use that gold to build some sort of, I don't know, some sort of facility that makes it so that people can, you know, go and they can be positively inspired to become better human beings. 
私がもう少し健康で長生きできてたら全部使い切っちゃうつもりだったんだけどね。Yeah, God, that's a bit scary. Well, if only my health had held out a little longer, I was planning to spend it all on myself. What? You're joking. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sanji laughed. Tears poured from her eyes again. Understandable, yeah. Oh, that must be. I, I don't even want to imagine what she must be feeling right now. God, that really was quite something. What's happening now? Yeah, I need to see what is going to happen with those two. Marcella stood alone in the rose garden maze, letting the rain quietly fall on him. Yeah. After searching for some time, Angie found him. Onita. God, I do wonder. Yeah, that's understandable. Yeah, Angie, who was feeling guilty, sensed anger in her brother's expression. Oh my god, so she thought he was going to hit her. She shut her eyes. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, however, her brother touched her softly. He patted her head gently. <laughs> hey. Sinjits <laughs> nante. The truth wasn't anything important, was it? Even though you were here, waiting for me to come home in such a warm moment. I'm back to the whole time. Yeah, but I do see that you learned the truth. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So many hopes you had of somebody miraculously surviving and coming back have been crushed. Hmm. However, you now have a re a new mission. I hope for living in the future. God, yes, definitely. Yeah, you kept that precious hope safe for me. Do you see that? Yeah, I was the one who opened the box and let it get away. Jesus, it turned out worse than Pandora's box. Yeah. Fair. Truth I didn't need to know flew out of the box, along with all of my hopes. 
you know, and that's understandable because, I mean, even though you know logically that they are totally irrational, you will still, you have to have the hopes if, you know, obviously something as awful as this has happened, you have to have the re hope of returning and, you know, the hope of just anybody potentially coming back. I mean, God, yeah, yeah, yeah. But now you can never have them because of the fact that you objectively know what's happened. It's open now and that's that. Oh, if it's empty inside, that means it won't fish. Yeah, that is understandable though. That's a good way of looking at it. Yeah. I mean, even though she obviously knows... Of, well, she obviously knows objectively that... You know, her family are all dead. Even Eva. And obviously everything about Eva as well. She's learnt that. Yeah, even though the truth is one of the most horrible things she could have learnt. It is also one of the best things because it really lets somebody understand. It understands the love Eva showed to her, unbelievably. But also the immense pain that comes of it. <clears throat> if it's empty inside, that means it won't fester. Yeah, but I do totally see that, yeah. And I'm going to be honest, the, the hope Angie actually had, it could drive somebody mad. It really could. But it's fully understandable if that happens. Yeah, Basil laughed heartily. Then, with that same smile on his face, he told her. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah, we're already dead. Yeah. <laughs> you lived 12 years on the hope. Then we might still be alive. Fair. Yeah, because they were all dead. Not anymore. Fair. Yeah, that's over and done with. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Definitely. Good for you. Good for you. Starting now, I'll step forward into a new life. Beato put Lokkenjima in the cat box. Seriously, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, Beato put Lokkenjima in the cat box. The next witch on Eva guarded the lid of that cat box her whole life. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm tired. Um, you, the witch after her. Open that lid. But so That's really interesting. Why does it show the past matter? I mean, obviously, in this case, I can totally see that because, you know, the truth of the past is totally... It's just too painful for her, probably. But then again, though, I just wonder about... You know, the truth of the past not actually mattering in this situation. I mean, obviously, logic would lead me to think that, you know, this is one of the most important things and you need to know how absurdly something as bad as this has actually occurred. What the hell has happened? You need to know that. That's the first thing you need to know. And that is the thing that you would instinctively search for. But then again, Basilis contradicting what I'd normally think and saying that it doesn't actually matter. But I suppose the truth doesn't really matter because of the fact that, you know, even though these people, you know, Angie had the hope of these people actually being alive, now she is dead, he's dead, all of them are dead. And that's just the weirdest thing about this, really. But, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, good for you. From now on, I'll truly live. Yeah. yeah, and I'll make my own personal truth prosper. Good luck. Oh, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, good luck, final witch of Mariah Sosiera. Oh. 
Wow, wonder what he thought of it. Yeah, good luck, Fan of Witch of Mario so Sierra. I've read Mario's grammar. Yeah, it's a great book with some really good stuff written in it. Yeah, even the Bible needs a translator. Maria no Madoshu ni datte, onyaku ga iru daro. No way! Are we actually going to be able to read it? Even the Bible needs a translator. So, Maria's grimoire probably needs one too. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Because obviously she's going to be able to be the person who relays all of the teachings that, you know, have... They have so much potential to change her life. They haven't fully changed her life because of the fact that she didn't fully see them. But, you know, she's going to prevent other people from, you know, not seeing the great... The great things that can actually happen in life. The fuck? I just noticed something really weird about the tendons in my hand. That is so fucking weird. Okay, and it, I'm sorry. <laughs> just surprised. Weird. I'll look into it later. Yeah, but now I do see that, yeah? Yes. yes, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, you've got to teach kids who are in the position you once were. Yeah, yeah, that's your new mission as the Witch of the Future. I'm gone. Oh yeah, that's good. So I am actually quite confused why they're talking about Angie as if she's going to have a lot of a future and she's going to be able to adopt all of these beautiful teachings that have been, you know, shoved down her throat and, you know, she's going to develop from them. I just don't really understand that because obviously you would have thought that, you know, she's died and she suicided by jumping off that building and, you know, was crushed by gravity. No, it would be everyone. Oh, and isn't it so nice to think at the end of this? Angie has been able to learn the lesson of Basila. Yeah. Everyone else too. <laughs> oh, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. All of us will love you forever. Yeah, don't forget that. I won't forget. Good for you. Good for you. Yeah, fair. Yeah, Angie leapt into Basilis' chest and sobbed. Humans are sad creatures who can learn but not unlearn. That's understandable. I mean, look at Angie, for example. She learns one of the forgeries that actually has a ridiculous and baseless conspiracy theory of Aunt Eva being the culprit. Boom. Whoever fucking wrote that forgery, do they realise that just for profit they have completely ruined the life of an individual, making it and two individuals in the most horrible way. Yeah, humans are sad creatures who can't who can learn but not unlearn. Yeah, she has already learned. Yeah, yeah, I don't disagree. Yeah, it may have been a cruel, terrifying, merciless thing, capable of destroying even the miracle called hope. 
Oh, that's interesting. However, there was still one tiny fragment left, gripped in her hand. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, so she has nothing, nothing left in life. She can do nothing, and, you know, her life has just been totally ruined by her inability to notice this. But, you know, the love that is here, it's just been able to be crystallised into a fragment, a small, tiny fragment. It's beautiful. Yeah, her family's love. If she can just remember that and hold it tight, then surely Angie will live on. Yeah, no, I see that. Yeah, she'll be able to stop before taking that single step into nothing. And that's unbelievable. So, yeah, that is interesting. That's even more interesting. What do you mean? Also, the Rokenjima cat box hasn't been opened completely. You've just taken a peek at what's inside. Hmm. So you must be the lid yourself. In other words, you're going to try and intercept Burns party. And this time you'll protect everything inside the cabinets. Yeah, that's understandable because obviously you know what is actually in the cat box, so you can protect all of the people that this could potentially affect. And this time you'll protect everyone inside the cat box. Me and Dad and Kiri san the cousins and the uncles and the aunts. Grandfather and the servants. <laughs> and all of the illusions. That's really interesting. This time I have to protect everyone. Ah, then shouldn't you hurry up a bit? Jesus Christ. Oh my god, I love that she's literally watching popcorn. <laughs> Sorry, this, she's literally watching this while simultaneously eating popcorn. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the sound of popcorn being eating and being eaten rang out from beyond the rose bush. <laughs> Hiding behind a bush though, watching this. That's hilarious. It was Lambda Delta. Yeah. Yeah, but I think it's actually really obvious to think about the fact that Angie is just the lid on the cat box. She is the one that knows the truth, so she needs to protect it so that everybody else can't learn the truth. But then again, though, that is kind of contradictory because that's going to happen in the real world. Angie will learn the truth in the real world. Well, will she? <laughs> no, the time we actually saw about Toya wanting to let Angie, um, you know, learn the truth, it's kind of confusing to think about, but that's kind of a story. Like, she doesn't possibly exist. All of the stuff about Toya reading Angie's works... Sorry, um, Angie reading Toya's works. They are all stories. <laughs> no, they are. Or maybe Angie could have actually just been a substitution for um, Hachijo. I don't know. you know this already yeah exactly though yeah i think you know this already but burn is just about to hold a big party for the book of the single truth yeah. i think you know this already but burn is just about to hold a big party for the book of the single truth she's gathered beings from heaven and from hell <laughs> From the spirit world and from parallel world. Jesus Christ. If she announces what's in the book in a place like that, it will all be too late, wouldn't it? Yes. That is really surprising to think that she has actually learned the truth and yet she is going to make it so that these people are going to be protected. I just genuinely can't believe this. This was a development that I really hadn't have sus haven't suspected. I just genuinely thought that... Um, you know, Burn was just going to be able to... Sorry, Andy was just going to be able to peacefully go to sleep and, you know, just uh, continue her floating within oblivion, really. But no. That's amazing that she actually has a chance to use everything that she has learned and to prove herself and to make it so that everybody, even though they are obviously heading for a fate of death after this game board has ended, 
God, that's the horrible thing about Umineko. I mean, you know, just no matter what happens, it's going to end in death and it's going to end in dying. But then again, though, that's just reasonable because these people have already died. I'm going. Yeah, I gave Burncastle that key. Understandable, though, it's my responsibility. Fair, yeah. It's my responsibility. I'll go and take it back. Uh. <laughs> the Great Witch of Theatre Goings. Uh, the Great Witch of Theatre Going Drama and Spectating's Noble City of Carefully Selected Books. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, that is actually interesting. I do wonder how Angie is going to get in, but there's no way for us to get in. There's a barrier around that place. Yeah, Angie doesn't exactly have a ticket. <gasps> oh my gosh, you gave me this! No way! With it, I can come and go as I please. Seriously, she would never suspect betrayal because obviously she just thinks Angie is just a really pathetic and sad girl, but no! No way! What an idiot. Seriously. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's stupid. Yeah, she forgot to collect it when she threw me away. God. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Yeah, and it's just horrible to think about the fact that after Angie had actually done the truth, she'd gone through the worst part of her life ever. The worst part of anything that she had just totally been written over and rejected. And burn, obviously, facilitating that as much as possible. Yeah, Angie fished through her pockets, and there was a jingling sound. Oh my god, there's a bell with a blue ribbon tied to it. Are we going to get a picture? Alright, I see. It's easy to imagine. It is quite funny, that definitely looks like something a cat would wear. Yeah, um, that's it. Um, one of those temporary entry passes that you get when you turn in your invitation. Oh, that's really good, yeah. Damn, you can't actually sneak in more than one people. That's a shame. Um, yeah, as long as you have that, at least one of you will be able to get into the city of... But I'm not even going <laughs> to... No, 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 no. The Great Witch of Drama... Great Witch of Theatre Going Drama and Spectating's Noble City of Carefully Selected Books. Yeah, 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 obviously you've got to convince her. Jeez, oh fucking hell, don't tell me she's not actually going to be able to be convinced here. That could be a threat. I don't know though. Well, as long as someone takes you across to see her fragments first. Lambda Delta. Lambda Delta. <laughs> Take me to the city of books. Angie. God, she is just... Yeah, that's understandable. I mean, it's just horrible to think that, you know, she's just completely in a result as a result of living her life, just completely rejecting love and really, really with a big misunderstanding. You know, she feels as if she's messed up so much that she needs to take responsibility, but then risking all that she's got. But then again, that's the horrible thing about this. These days are so ideal, but they won't last forever. No way. Yeah, this is my way of taking responsibility. Fair, yeah. I wonder what's going to happen in the real world, by the way. That's the thing I'm really curious about. This is my way of taking responsibility. I'll see to it that the book of the single truth isn't made public. Yeah. Are you serious? Hmm, that place is a den of monsters among monsters. Oh, shit. Now that you've lost Burns' protection, you'll be weaker than a fly. Jesus Christ, squish the end. What happened? Oh, that's interesting. The bell was snatched from Angie's hat. Oh my god. Oh god. Oh, I feel quite bad for Angie. Yeah, but look at this. Oh my god, you can just totally tell this guy has overprotective brother syndrome. Wow. Lambda Delta, oh go, I just need to, to get me in there. That's understandable, actually. After all, I'm an empty creature, unable to exist outside the cat box. 
Jesus, to think he's actually going to sacrifice himself for that, but... Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, Angie, on the other hand, must live on so into the future. The and you're a person with a future, too. Hmm. So I'll go. Yeah, that's the awful thing, because obviously when Battle's game board goes, everything's over. He does have nothing to lose. And it's just interesting to think that these people, even though Angie has objectively suicided, think as if she's got a future in pursuit of, you know, just teaching all of those brilliant teachings that she has been given to other people. Yeah, but no, I do see that, yeah. But then again, if, it, if this responsibility in this way of, you know, amending what you've done is going to kill you and, you know, create a result that's even more tragic and even more bad for the people around you, then is it really? No, this is my responsibility. My way of making up for what I did. If I don't do it myself, the future won't change at all. And I won't be able to save any of the future cat boxes. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Angie tried to snatch the key from Battler's hand, but Battler had no intention of giving it up. The two of them were grimly serious, but from the sidelines, it looked like an ordinary... Yeah, that's fair, yeah. I do see that. Lambda Delta watched this conversation and shrugged. If she just took one of them to the City of Books, she wouldn't have to make any enemies and there was no risk to her. Yeah, that is fair. Yeah, all she cared about was which one would make the story more interesting. Well, they have their strengths in terms of character, both of them do. Nothing else. But then she finally noticed. Stop! Stop. Hold on. Hold on a sec, you two. Hold on. What's your problem? Save it for later. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, we're having an important sibling discussion here. <laughs> okay, first off. Let go of each other's hands. Battle is holding the bell now. Right? Jump, Battle. What? Jump. Like this. Is he going to be teleported? You're next, Angie. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Is it... I wonder what's actually going to happen. Maybe you, you're next, Angie. Try jumping. Why the hell should I? Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. That's really weird. What? Why? Uh, yeah, that is fully understandable. What? That's really, really weird. If Pasadena was holding the bell, where did that sound come from? Angie hurriedly searched through her pockets. What? Huh? When she did, another blue ribbon bell came out of a different pocket than the first one. I am really surprised. Just genuinely, how are they the same though? Oh my god, these are the same, aren't they? No way. But that is a really good question. Yeah, why are they two? Why are there two? I was only given one of them. I don't know why. That is actually really interesting to think. I really do. Right, who could it be? I don't think Burn would do it. She would not be that stupid. I think Erika. No, 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 no. I think Eva Beatrice. I think she's definitely the most likely person to have somehow done it. But then again, though, I mean, I don't really understand. It can't have been her because of the fact that, you know, Angie's body would have been completely screwed and crumpled and messed up. I mean,. You know, her form has only been re... I don't know, remade here. So how would the remade form have the key within it? I feel like it's maybe somebody here. Maybe they've actually slipped it into her pocket somehow without her knowing. I feel like either Beatrice or... No, no, no. It has to be a Voyager witch, though. It has to be someone there at the party. How could it be anybody here? Hmm. I, I think maybe it's either Lambda or maybe there was someone at the actual party who did it. And I just didn't really realise how that could be possible. I don't know why. At any rate, you've got two bells that will get you into the city of books. I can't believe that though. Seriously. Oh yeah, this has potential. Yeah, now I don't have to sit here and watch the two of you play around with each other anymore. Fair enough, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the pair of them gripped their bells and looked at each other. God, this really is going to be 
the final send off. My god, I am very excited for this from the very beginning. Now I see that, yeah. This game's belong to the two of you. Fair. Fair enough, this has been a slight change in who the opponent is. This isn't a competition between you two. Hmm. I'm just genuinely so surprised about the fact that Angie has this as well. Yeah. It's a fight between Battle and Angie, who want to close the lid on the cap box. Yeah. Fair enough, yeah. And Burn, who wants it opened. Angie has moved from Burn teams to Battle team. Yeah, yeah, that's all there is to it. Namda Delta. Yeah, that is going to be properly cool. Take us to the city of the books. If Umineko isn't going to go all out here, then I genuinely don't know what's going to happen in this next chapter. My God, <laughs> this is going to be so cool. I feel like we're going to get my, one of the most high energy battles I think we have ever seen. I mean, it's the finale. Why wouldn't it be? Okay, okay. I'm just taking you there. Got it? Yeah, after all, after that, I'm done being anything but a spectator. Haha, <laughs> fair. Oh, you really think she's going to do that? Okay, okay, I'm just taking you there, got it? After that, I'm done being anything but a spectator. Oh, yeah, I see. I just want to have the best seats to see exactly how you will fight, what you should do, and how Burn makes mids me out of you. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, that contrast change. It just suddenly got so much brighter. Right, what are we actually going to be able to see now? Are we going to see um, the battle or the truth? I wonder. Ooh. Oh, yeah, we're seeing the battle. Oh, my God, this is going to be cool. Oh, this is not what I was expecting to see. Hmm. Yeah, because obviously these guys are really going to have to, you know, they're going to have to keep their guard up because they will have to disappear sometime soon because of the fact that, you know, obviously, um... Obviously, the pirate ships are coming. They need to, um, you know open the doors, give the warning signs, and, you know, run for their lives, let's be honest here. Yeah, Shannon and Kanon stood guard in front of the doors of the Golden Land. They glared quietly and fearlessly at the eerie fleet of ships across the horizon. God, yeah. Hmm. What's she doing? Yeah, Shannon slowly lifted her hands. Oh, yeah, good one. Yeah, Conan raised his right hand and a red blade appeared there. What about Sonny? Stop right there. Oh, interesting that both of them can't actually form a blade at the same time. Yeah, stop right there. I forbid you to come any closer. But, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. If you do, I'll kill you. 
Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, they could see a, they could see a single dinghy leaving the fleet and approaching them. They couldn't tell if it was a messenger or, or the first wave. Yeah, that. Oh god, that lasts fair enough. Actually, yeah, because it could be a messenger of some sort of plot point, or maybe it could be the beginning of battle. Yeah, you should watch that course. Also. My god. Oh, that's really. That must be quite scary. Shut on the car and watched it cautiously. Oh my god! Wow. What a cool outfit. I love that pirate hat though. That looks hilarious. And obviously accompanied by goats. <laughs> I love how much you see, sir. I think that pirate hat actually looks really quite good. Hmm. That's quite nice. After. Oh, yeah, the head of that dinghy rode by goats. <laughs> I love the goats are wearing it. My God. <laughs> Stood Eddie car. Yeah. Where the heck did she get that thing? <laughs> oh, my God. Seriously. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but that's quite reasonable. Yeah, maybe she's trying to act the part of the fleet's leader because she is. Yeah. Eddie Carr was glaring at them and smiling aggressively with what appeared to be a pirate hat on her head. I've come to deliver our terms. There will be room for negotiation. Oh, God. Hmm. Yeah, Shannon and Kano looked at each other. Eddie Carr was the one offering this deal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely, yeah. It wasn't likely to be anything agreeable. However, if they just turned her away, the attack would probably begin at once. Yes, definitely, though, I agree, yeah. Yeah, I do wonder what they're going to do. Yeah, since they were in a firmly inferior position, they wanted to buy time by any means they could. At Shannon's nod, Kanon erased his sword. Interesting, I do wonder what they're going to do. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, it definitely signifies the beginning of battle. Obviously, yeah, anything. It signifies the beginning of death as well, because obviously, rain. Yeah, the Golden Land was filled with a hard downpour, accompanied by occasional thunder. Hmm. Edika, who realised that this weather spoke for their emotions. Oh, yeah, now I see that, yeah. Eddie Carp, who realised that this weather spoke for emotion, smiled even more boldly. Oh yeah, of course, you were fucking saddest. At the centre of the Golden Land was the arbour surrounded by the Golden Rose Garden. A large number of human and illusions were there, arguing about something. Yeah, God, it's probably just because of the fact that they've known that these people are coming. Yeah, even without asking, it was easy to guess the nature of the debate by their anguished expressions. Oh, I see. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After all, in this life or death situation, they didn't have many options they could take. Yeah, it's probably just a negotiation-related nightmare. Mm, Mr. Chiestas and Beatrice. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the direction that Eddie Carr was being led, Deltor stood waiting, accompanied by the Chiesta sister corpse. When Eddie Carr, accompanied by her goat guards, saw Deltor, she gave a bow that could not only appeared graceful. Jesus Christ. Wow. I'm surprised. Yeah, yeah, that surprised me even more. Yeah, Deltor followed suit and gifted, sorry, gave a graceful bow of... Um, the sort that was rarely seen from her. I am Beatrice, the um, master of the Golden Land and the Golden... And the Golden and the Endless Witch. Announce yourself. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I mean, they so know who they are. This is really quite funny to think about the fact that... Um, you know, it's just as if it's all so peaceful and so respectful. You can never suggest you can never suggest that these people are going to be the ones that are going to quite literally try to take 
these people's lives. By the way, I just think it's so weird to think about the fact that the Chiesta sisters are good here. And, you know, they're not deadly killing machines for, you know, our uh, downfall, really. <laughs> We have been dispatched from the Great Witch of Theatre going drama and spectating this noble city of carefully selected books. Let's fucking go, somebody else saying it like that. <laughs> oh, that's actually really quite interesting, that. Yeah, I'm the Witch of Truth, the commander of the library. F the library flee! Oh my god, I love that name. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, it does actually totally make sense. And but wouldn't you have thought that um, you know calling it a library just entirely defeats the purpose of uh, and slanders the purpose of Featherin's um, you know noble city of carefully selected books? <laughs> yeah, because obviously calling it a library is the worst thing you can do. <laughs> That's actually quite funny. That yeah, I am the witch of the truth, the commander of the library fleet, which is um, committed to bestowing honor and protection to books. Oh, yeah, I see that, yeah, because obviously it quite literally is the case. I mean, you know, if Eddie Card doesn't actually do this, then the cat box is actually going to be, it's never going to be able to be unopened because of the fact that Angie will reveal it. But I really do wonder what's going to happen with, uh, you know, Ikko and Toya as well. Um, the Witch of Truth, the commander of the library fleet, which is committed to bestowing honor and protection to books. My name is Furudo Erika. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. <laughs> yeah, shall we go going down into business? Yeah, who wants to celebrate? Yeah, your definition of good news would be something that would be a little bit concerning to like anybody who'd be mentally sane. Yeah, you ought to celebrate. We of the library fleet decided to um d dedicated to um offering honor and protection to books. <laughs> I love that. Um, have come to bring good news to you all. First. Hmm. I would like to announce that, after careful selection, the City of Books has acknowledged and accepted the game board created by the Endless Witch Beatrice. That's a great and honourable book. Yeah, that is indeed a great now, nah, fair enough. Yeah, that game board is a profoundly entertaining and original masterpiece, worthy of close study. God, it deserves to be released for all of our subjects to read. I love that she's just quite literally praising it in the best and most, you know, probably the most heartfelt way that somebody like her can praise it. And now she's probably just going to say, I must be the one to end it. <laughs> it deserves to be released for all of our subjects to read. Jesus Christ. That's actually really quite interesting. So how's that going to change what they're going to do? And say so the City of Books has ordered us, ordered us to grant eternal honour and protection to this game. <laughs> this is all quite long and boring. <laughs> I love that. Get to the point. Oh my god! Oh! Yeah, I, I thought it was just going to be somebody rewriting the game board or something like that. Oh my god! <laughs> we demand that you hand the entirety of this game board over to the Honorable City of Books. Yeah, doing so will give this board and its pieces the greater, greatest honor and protection imaginable. Yeah, sure. Sure, man. Yeah, and what if it's... Yeah, because people actually want to spend their times with their families. Yeah, I think that's a little bit of a facade. A facade, even. Oh, shit. 
what? Oh my god, you will be prosecuted for the crime of monopolizing a great cultural artifact that ought to be shared amongst all of our subjects. What? We are here to notify you of the impending assault, one which will be waged by us to protect the benefit benefits that are the rightful property of all subjects. You're also like, oh my god. That's actually really quite interesting to think about the fact that they feel as if this game board has been so good and so interesting that, you know, all of the subjects of... I don't really know who the subjects are. I mean, all of Featherin subjects would maybe indicate all of the witches? I don't know. Or maybe if if she is quite literally at the top of everything, then maybe. I don't know. <laughs> That's hilarious, though. So the game board you have created, you are charged for the crime of actually monopolizing a game board that you created. I mean, if anything, why is that the case? I mean, Burn has quite literally... Lambda and Burn have quite literally taken the game board over and then they have diverted its focus. So I don't really understand how Beatrice is the one who's getting in trouble because she hasn't done the most. <laughs> yeah, we'll give... It may give the greatest honour and protection... Oh, no, fuck off. But, um, yeah, it won't give them any love which they'll have together, and it will be all a farce. There will be no comfortable conditions. It will be hell, and you will be tortured, and you will probably be killed. And your guts will probably be eaten as well, I can't forget about that. <laughs> I love that proper communist. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously though, yeah. Are you not are you not concerned that the shared property of all subjects might be destroyed in this assault of yours? <laughs> I love that she is just using any excuse, and she is just using one that could actually logically be justified by the law to do this. According to the Great Library Protective Regulations, when a criminal guilty of monopolizations, monopolization of a cultural artifact, even though they made it themselves, <laughs> raises that objection of, as you now have done. Jesus Christ. The executive fleet may prioritize arrest over its protective duties, as long as they obtain permission from the Great Court. <laughs> yeah, why? That, that'd be too bad for Eddie Carr if she didn't actually obtain their permission. <laughs> of course, we have already obtained the Great Court's written authorization. I love that. I imagine the word arrest is closely followed by dead or alive, am I right? <laughs> I'm impressed that you can read those tiny letters. Oh my god, I love that. I love that. Yeah, so it's obviously um, the case that, um, you know, when somebody's actually arrested, they are going to be killed. Yeah, now I'm enough fooling around. <laughs> yeah, let's say you're... I mean, if Beatrice said yes, I think she would be insane. Yeah, but then again, I think it's good that she's going to make a fully informed decision. That's good. What do we have to gain by accepting your um, conditions? <laughs> yeah, understandable. Both of them won't have to fight. I do see that. It will be a lot easier. But what will they have to lose? That is the best question. Both of us will be saved a troublesome task. Yeah, fair enough. Furthermore, your brave and noble acts 
will be recorded as a glorious final chapter in the city of books. Hmm. That is interesting, you know, the fact that these people are just quite literally trying to affect current events so that they can document this. I mean, this is journalism, but just on an extremely high level. My God, you do understand, right? Yeah, I... Well, then again, said from Edika, and also miracle, belief, stuff like that. You know, love as well. I do think that, judging by the fact that Umi Neko's main message is without love, it cannot be seen. Maybe they will. I don't know. You do understand, right? You have no chance of winning. Oh, that's interesting. This isn't even a fight. Jesus Christ. I see you sitting there at the bottom. Wow, while people throw stones at you. Oh, fuck. Oh, wait, never mind. So you claim that I have the um, power to choose nothing except how the library wishes will record my final moments. Oh, uh, yeah, that, that is actually fair enough. Yeah, I like that. The rest depends on you. Yeah, yeah. I don't really think that logic is going to apply to Beatrice. If she treasured this game board, why would she surrender everything to, you know, just so that it can be documented and it can be recorded and then it can be read by other people? Yeah, the rest depends on you. If you treasure this game board, you ought to surrender. If you treasure this game board, you ought to surrender. The pieces will be treasured by our many loyal subjects for all time. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, you really think that's a good thing? Yeah, we'll be able to continue their roles on into eternity. Hmm. Yeah, I like that, yeah. In other words, the tragedies I created at will shall repeat forevermore. That is interesting. Oh, that's actually really interesting to think about the fact that the game board will be preserved in the library. Maybe as a result of that, people will know how to actually have the game board. And it will just be like an illusionary forgery because everyone in the library will actually be able to know how to force the events. And, you know, I'm saying that could actually indicate people, um, you know, being able to constantly recreate the world and just constantly create suffering for these pieces. They wouldn't have very sanitary and good conditions. They would have constant suffering and fighting and pain and, you know, constant 1986s. How is that any different from what you've been doing so far? No. Yeah, yeah, no, I do see that. But then again, obviously, in a time scale, they probably have way more game boards and they probably wouldn't end either. Yeah, it isn't. Is there anything else? Yeah, I think if she said yes, then I don't even know what would happen. <laughs> yeah, it isn't. Is there anything else? If not, allow me to ask. To give you my answer. Go ahead. Eddie Carten slightly. Oh, yeah. After all, this is the great Lady Beatrice she was dealing with. She might shout, here is my answer, dramatically, and do something crazy. I wonder. Oh, yeah, I see that. That's interesting. They say a cornered rat is the most likely to bite a cat. Furthermore, Edika had intel telling her that the great lady Lambda Delta, which of the Senate, had been spreading her, had been spending her time inside the Golden Land. Oh, yeah, that's actually really quite interesting. I do wonder who the, th who the fuck could the intel be, though? That actually really surprises me. Hmm. Edika needed to carry out this noble task that her master had assigned her, and she had to carry it out perfectly. Oh yeah, that's interesting. If she was honest, she wanted to make Beldor raise a white flag, even by trickery if necessary. Hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, that is actually really interesting to think about. Firstly, I mean, even though Lambda is just a theatre goer, we've obviously seen the fact that she has been able to make An Angie and um, Basila able to go into, um, you know, the Senate party room. And also, um, you know, she will give people guarantees with certainty if she believes that they actually have the resolve that resolve that is fitting for them. So, you know, what I'm trying to say is, like, Lambda may actually be the key for this. Maybe with Lambda's power, this might not be the case, and perhaps they could win. I don't know. Hmm. That's really interesting. I just love how quickly she admits this as well. That's a funny thing. But obviously, with a person like Eddie Kai, you don't want to get into logical fights with her because, oh my god, you would be there for the entire day. Having an argument with Eddie Kai would be like ending your life. <laughs> Well, no, 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 that's a little bit too far, but you would feel so awful that, you know, you would just feel like you want to fucking die. <laughs> I mean, I get that, you know, when whenever people say, like, I want to fucking die at the moment, I mean, I get that it's a casual expression and people find it quite funny, but, you know, it really does have a horrible meaning and association behind it, and it's just horrible to think that slang has made it so that expressions like that are just, you know, that have such bad meaning are just so commonly said. I mean, I, I know, obviously, everybody finds it funny. Like, kill yourself. Like, that's a really good example of what I'm just thinking there. You know, just common slang that is used that actually has really bad meanings and those really bad meanings, you know, being normalised over society. It's not good. Well, I sound like a fucking parent. But I hope you get what I mean. It's just really quite interesting to think about the fact that she wants to preserve the tale of the game board. She wants everyone to surrender. She doesn't want the game board to actually end. But I don't really understand. So she's going to make it so that all of the game board is destroyed by our artillery. Um, and, you know, her pirate ship weaponry. It's just kind of surprising to think that, um, you know, she would actually... She would go to means as far as that rather than just forcing these people to come to the city of books. So, even though this was a farce, she held back from giving any unneeded provocation. Yeah, understandable. Yeah, she... Yeah, yeah, yeah. She gulped and tried to size Beth all up. Hmm. No, I do see how that could be pathetic. <laughs> and then, with the pathetic expression on her face, Beth let out a sigh. I'll be honest. The truth is, I'm tired. What do you mean by that? But yeah, that is understandable, yeah. My game had already achieved its purpose when the fight with Basil had ended. Yeah. Yeah, that is understandable, yeah. So what do you mean by that? So what do you mean by that? And yet, for various reasons, the game has repeated several times since then. No, I do see that. Yeah. Yeah, you've had a game board and then, you know, it's just been needlessly and really unnecessarily continued so many times after you, the person who's actually created the game board, have ended it. I do totally see that.
正直全く想像していないオレンジです。Nah, Yeah, to be honest, that isn't the answer I was expecting at all. では幸福なさると、so、you want to surrender? 本気で、really? ぶっちゃけるとどっちでもよい。That is really interesting to think about the fact that she is showing the same sort of personality in episode 4, you know, just a lack of care for the game board because of the. Oh, it's just such a so. I was about to say socialist. Oh my god, what? I meant self. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ, I'm tired. It is such. I mean, the thing that's kind of sad about this is it's a really selfish view because. I mean, even though. Uh, this is like everything beforehand. I mean, well, then again, maybe not in episode four because of the fact that all of the pieces are gone, but still, the pieces of the game board, they are still there. I mean, even though you could just think of them as chess pieces, you could also think of them as literal, living, and animate beings. So, you know, you would need. You, you would need to consider the fact that you ending the game board here is actually going to be responsible for the killing of a lot of people. Simply put, I don't care either way. And illusions as well. But then again, though, let's be honest, after episode 8, these, every, the fate of everything is completely going to be screwed. So it's never going to come back the same. So um, what I'm trying to say is, um, you know, how, well, is it really bad if Beatrice does this? Simply put, I don't care either way. It doesn't matter whether I surrender or whether we're vanquished by you. Interesting. Fair, yeah. Yeah, I simply want to have the curtain closed on this game board and tail, regardless of who does the deed. Oh. I'm actually really quite surprised because obviously I would have thought of episode 4, that would be. Oh, yeah, that's understandable, yeah. Of course, that was a lie. She knew she couldn't win, even if she fought. Yeah, that is really... That's just genuinely what I was not expecting at all. Wow. Of course, that was a lie. She knew she couldn't win, even if she fought. For now, their best option was to play for time. Yeah, they would fix Edikar's attention to this spot. And during that time, Basilo and the others would steal the key from Burncastle while she was still completely off her guard. Yeah, good one. Yeah, once they have the key, they will return to the Golden Land, use that key to let Angie open the door to the future and set her... Oh my god, does Battler know about the fact that he that she tried to kill herself? I do wonder. I do wonder if there is going to be some sort of incredibly tragic realisation that Battler may not have known. I mean, though I would be surprised about Battler, um, you know, not knowing about Angie's suicide, I wouldn't be either. Yeah, that was their goal line. I hope they're going to be able to meet it. Oh, yeah, that, that's fair. Yeah, everything that happened after that would be inside the cat box. Hmm. Yeah, I see that, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. That's really, really good to think, you know, just how genuinely Beatrice can make a facade. So much so that, you know, Eddie Card genuinely believes this. Is interesting. It's interesting to think about the fact that this the same key that opens the book to the truth is also the one that opens the key to the future. I think that just really shows surprisingly that with Angie, you know, the truth can lead to the future. But then again, this is what I was kind of thinking about. You know, you have the truth and then you have something that is so awful. But then you learn from it and you learn how to cope with it and you know you apply all of the lessons that learning the truth has actually taught you and then you realize that you know with the love of your family and with um you know with love everything is going to be made so much easier and she is going to be able to conquer such a big challenge so yeah i think you could kind of link those two together
But everything would be in the cat box. I see that. There is no way of knowing what would happen after that. Unless you have seen it yourself. But then again, though, I suppose if you're, I don't know, for example, really perceiving events weirdly or, I don't know, you have, oh my god, you have some sort of, you have the weird type of brain damage that that person who, you know, is just totally traumatized, well, totally ruined by the trauma of, you know, some sort of incident, the car incident, and, um, you know, not being able to remember what they even, who they even are, you know, just, if you literally see sights, um, you know, of your previous life, really, I mean, you know, just seeing stuff like that, can you really trust what you're seeing if you're seeing stuff like that, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, so maybe just because of the fact that you've seen it and heard it doesn't necessarily mean it is what you've seen and heard. But then again, though, I think that's an extremely like unlikely case. So I think you can definitely trust what people see, um, you know, to be the cat box. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Yeah. Yeah, with hope. That's just such a weird thing to say. I feel like Angie's actually going to die here because she's always had the fate of death. I don't think Basila realises it, so maybe that's where she's going to die. No one would know whether Bertha and the others were alive or dead. That was enough. Yeah, fair. The only strategy Balto and the others could use to achieve this was to buy time. Yeah, because that key needs to be stolen. If you do surrender, it may be a bit of an anti-climax, but it will save me a lot of trouble. Oh, yeah. She sounds as she is so improvised. She sounds as if she is really improvising it. I love it. But, well, it's not quite so simple. You see, and this is just between you and me. Oh, yeah, fair, yeah. As you may know, the great Lady Lambda Delta is staying here. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder what she's actually going to do. She is, um... Pushing us to show her a dramatic climax. It is, seriously! I mean, they quite literally have to totally, um, you know, make it so that their life is risked just so that a theatre goer can have an entertaining experience watching you. I mean, it's not very easy to risk your life just so that somebody can watch you. Yeah, that's a pretty cruel whim to force on someone. Jesus Christ. This is the worst thing. I mean, it's a very brutal way of actually putting it, but I don't even disagree. But then again, though, I mean, you can't. Oh, my God, it's just so uh, such a heartless way of putting it, though. You can't, obviously, seek approval when a message of truth like that much. <laughs> That's a pretty cool whim to force on someone. How are a few wimpy people in what's basically an already solved puzzle? Jesus Christ, supposed to fight against our fleet. Yeah... With its hundreds and thousands of troops, Jesus fucking Christ, hundreds of thousands? Yeah, that's awful. Very true, very true. God, yeah, no, I, I don't even disagree. Yeah, the gap in strength is overwhelming. God, we told her there wouldn't even be a fight, but... Oh, that's actually really interesting. Well, Lady Lambda Delta didn't listen. And I just love how much she's improvising. And I love that Eddie Car can't actually, um, you know, tell that she's improvising. Well, Lady Lambda Delta didn't listen. And she just said that she'd bring some of her friends to support us. So we should fight with everything we had. Lady Lambda Delta's friends. Unlike Burncastle, who kept to herself. Yeah, I love to have many friends. I see. Her friends and patrons were either territory lords of great influence. Oh, I see. Who came from all over the place. Or else... <laughs> yeah, monsters that have become legends in their own life. That is interesting. Jesus Christ.
Yeah, that's insane. Gosh, she must be a really popular witch. Wow. In all seriousness, her so-called fan club had enough size and influence that it could have suddenly been declared as itself a separate country in the sea of fragments. <laughs> I love that. Without anyone being overly surprised. Oh god, don't get political. This has got a little bit too political. Yeah, I see that. I just wonder where she's going with this. I really do. This is quite a problem for us with Lady Lambda Delta all ready for action. <laughs> Without any regard for us. She keeps on calling up friends and acquaintances on the phone from all over the place, telling them to come. I just love how much she is totally messing any guy around. Uh, yeah, seriously. Yeah, of course, this is all a lie. Lanza does a. <laughs> I turned into a small candy comet and was now shooting towards the city of the books with Battler and Angie and. <laughs> it's. Oh my god, it's, it's human. Oh my god, it's trafficking. What the hell? They're being trafficked. Help them! <laughs> so to make sure that Lambda Delta and... Well, they are quite literally illegally going in. <laughs> so to make sure that Lambda Delta and Basila's absences were not noticed. Oh, that's really interesting. Oh, that's... That's really quite something. So that has obviously really deceived Eddie Carl. I like it, yeah. So to make sure that Lambda Delta and Basila's absences were not noticed. Everybody was crowded around the arbor, pretending to argue furiously with each other. Yeah, that's so good. <laughs> oh yeah, Vatala-sama, give us your decision. We, the Seven Sisters of Bakatry, are prepared for death at any time. <laughs> oh, these people can fake arguments so well as well, I love it. They're, they're probably doing a good facade, but then again, it's really good because obviously, you know, Lambda has been told about... Uh, sorry, um, Ed, Eddie Carr has been told about Lambda, not about Battler. No way! Yeah, I think she'd been in for a nasty shock when she actually realised the truth about him. Yeah, firmly opposed to taking a last stand that would lead to our deaths. Yeah. That is a fair point, though. I love that they're, you know, jokingly arguing, but they are actually saying some really good points. I firmly oppose taking a last stand that would lead to our deaths. What could possibly be gained by dying? <laughs> yeah, that is something Nazi he would never say. How could you be such a coward? Okay, maybe more conceit maybe more um, you know, like Nazi he maybe more conceivable. How can you be such a coward? It is inconceivable that we should live on in shame as prisoners. <laughs> Fair enough. There are times when the mere um, fact of being alive gives one opportunity. Yes, indeed. Seriously. Yeah, short temper makes a bad leader. Ah, yeah, that is actually really interesting to think that they're all. The only thing that's really bad about this is the fact that, you know, the battle, the arguments are all centred around Battler. But then again, though, I suppose that kind of gives the illusion that he is in there. So, you know, Eddie Carl doesn't really need to worry about the vacation of him. But then again, though, maybe she would ask to see Battler. What do they do then? I love that. Oh my god, the Lambda country. The Lambda fan club country. The independent... What's a what's good name? The in... I don't know, just some sort of independent state. <laughs> I love how much she's actually trying to buy time though. I mean, she is getting every single second bought. You know, just trying to engage in ridiculous conversations so that Angie and Battler have the most time possible to steal the key. Good one.
Yeah, fair. <laughs> Basta, if you call yourself a man now. Oh, fuck off. Now the time to act like one. <laughs> no, Angie. Well, then again, how would they know that Angie was here to begin with? I agree. Oh, yeah, good one, yeah. There are, time, there are times when a man has to make a tough decision. Yeah. That's actually a really interesting statement. I do see that, oh my god, looking at trade, that could be a really vulnerable, um, you know, a really vulnerable feel to a statement like that. In many cases, the timing of a decision is more valuable than the decision itself. Yeah, but you'll also kind of ruin everything. <laughs> you will never surrender for your pride. If we surrender, they may not be violent. Yeah. Yeah, we can't be, you can't be serious. That is actually a good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you would have thought that maybe he'd be able to fight over against them. But then again, he is also kind of like a, you know, young kid. <laughs> you can't be serious. When are you supposed to be a male lion? Ha, <laughs> I love it. Where are your fangs now? Fair enough. Yeah, if death awaits us regardless, I would rather die as a wolf than a pig. <laughs> are you stupid? <laughs> Are you saying you want to die like an... No, 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 but you want to die like somebody who's ferocious rather than somebody that's just greedy and, you know, always accepting the easy path. I, I do see that, yeah. Are you stupid? Are you saying you want to die like a dog? <laughs> I love that these guys are so good at faking arguments though, seriously. They can just totally make something that continues. And it continues so naturally because of how heated the topic is. It all depends on the strength of the support Lambda Delta San can provide. Lambda Delta San. I love it. Lambda Delta San, are your friends really strong enough to win against them? <laughs> it does so seriously, it's a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I don't disagree. Yeah, it's a bet. We'll either surrender and die or we'll lose a bet and die. Yeah, death is the only option. Interesting. But yeah, I don't disagree, yeah. Interesting, in that case, our chances of survival must be higher if we take that bet. Oh, that's interesting. So, if you actually wanted to justify something, then the Great Court may not actually show mercy if you don't honourably surrender. And if you fight to the last second, that actually kind of surprises me. An honourable surrender will surely cause the great court to show mercy. They're backed by the Senate, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're backed by the Senate, aren't they? Sure, they'll hem and haw. But we'll see the guillotine in the... I love that. Yeah, they'll make facades, but we will see the worst of the situation. Anyway, let's, up, let's all calm down. Cool your heads. Fair enough. I mean, then again, what she is saying is extremely reasonable. It's just, you know, she does kind of sound emotional when saying it. <laughs> I'm opposed to letting our emotions control us. <laughs> George is the best person for that, by the way, can I just say? Why don't you calm down first? Jesus Christ. <laughs> it just sounds so much more serious than it actually is. Yeah, why don't you calm down first? We have another possible strategy. Mutually assured discretion. Gotta love it. We might not be able to win, but if we can convince them that we plan on taking enough of them with us, that might, for our, that might for our, force our opponents to show restraint. I mean, yeah, understandable, but I don't disagree because of the sheer volume of the opponents. 
So basically. Yeah, so basically, if they're determined to attack, we'll let them know that we aren't gonna down without doing some damage, but yeah, fair. <laughs> Yeah, but are they really going to survive? Are they really going to have any chance? Lambda Delta no tomodachi wa minna sugoi yo! Oh, I love the lie. All Lambda Delta's friends are incredible. Minna minna sugoi densetsu to buyuden wo motsu sugoi sugoi maja kaibutsu. Akuma ya kami sama ga kibbana da kara. She's definitely telling the truth. Oh boy, I can just hear Doza getting mad. I can just see her eyebrows going more and more diagonally. Getting more and more angry. <laughs> All of Lambda Delta's friends are incredible. She knows lots and lots of witches, beasts, demons, and gods. All of which have really, really huge legends and histories. I love that. Yeah, I don't think Lambda Delta has any friends. Yeah, I mean, I mean, then again, she does have loads of friends, and it's actually really quite surprising that she has so many friends that she could quite literally, you know form a country within the Lambda Delta fan club, but still, the Lambda Delta fan club is so fucking ridiculous. But then again, I mean, Lambda Delta is the embodiment of the statement, it's so fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Even if those ships outnumber the stars in the sky, Lambda Delta's friends would wipe them out with a single... <laughs> Fair enough. That... But then again, there are a lot of Lambda's friends, but there are probably 10 to 100 times more goats. Will this really work? <laughs> she hasn't seen through our act yet, has she? No. It is working. You must speak more forcefully as well. <laughs> yeah, I love that. You can so see in the desperation of Genji's voice. Yeah, it is working. Is working. You must speak more forcefully as well. Do not worry about politeness. <laughs> oh my god, this is gonna be fun. Enough, you gutless swine. <laughs> Do you like the backbone to finish with a bang? <laughs> Enough you got the swine you that in the backbone to finish with a bang. Yeah, that's understandable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean you should just totally finish I mean I suppose he's kinda of thinking about the fact that you should begin with a bang, you should end with a bang. You know, you shouldn't make it so that you'd only I mean no surrender, basically. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, that is fair. Yeah, don't forget that some of us are opposed to fighting. Oh, yeah, that's brilliant. It's just such a serious debate that, um, you know, these people are obviously going to have really conflicting views, or even if they don't, they're going to be able to fake it. Hold on, don't forget that some of us are opposed to fighting. I think we should surrender. Oh, yeah, he is the king of the facade. What? <laughs> Jesus Christ, God, are you loser loving fool? <laughs> Jesus Christ, if he. <laughs> it's just an act. Why would you say that? Okay. Oh, yeah. Even these guys are pulling in on the facade. Yeah, so, well, it looks like the debate has gotten quite heated. Maybe these guys are actually tricking um, the Power of as well, though. Well, it looks like the debate has gotten quite heated. So, will we surrender? So, will we surrender or will we fight back? Which will it be? Ah, yeah, they're definitely in on the facade. Yeah, nobody knows. 
Personally speaking, I would like to surrender. Yeah, that is understandable and not to be preserved in a totally ruined way that makes it so that the truth is just completely tainted by people who have unopened the cat box. But still, though, oh no, you can't have that. Personally speaking, I would like to surrender. If my role will end anyway, I would prefer that game board to be preserved the way I made it. Yeah. I cannot bear to have Lady Lambda Delta continue to use it, however she... <laughs> I just love that they've totally vanillaized um, Lambda. We don't want that either. I came here to fight you, but I'm no match for Lady Lambda Delta's friends. Yeah, secretly, Edgar was getting worried about these complicated developments, and she was relieved that she hadn't pushed too hard earlier on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, understandable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she wanted to flatter Bertha at the end and end this with a bloodless takeover. Oh, I see. Even the great Lady Lambda Delta probably wouldn't seriously think of picking a fight with the Senate. Yeah, fair. <laughs> I might it was probably something much more trivial. A simple desire to watch the game board's final final fireworks from the front row. See, I mean, I get the Lambda could probably see like the spoiled child type. But then again, it would actually really surprise me if she'd do this much. <laughs> oh yeah, I like that though. Yeah, however, if she really did have some fireworks of her own prepared, it was at least possible that this could turn into a ruckus that Eddie Carr would have no chance. Yeah, a little bit ironic. Good reasoning. Yeah, really good reasoning. Because that's true. Yeah, Beltor saw all of this going on in Eddie Carr's mind. Yeah, good. Feel that mistrust. So she continues to act with an even more pathetic expression on her face. Oh yeah, yeah, I don't disagree. Even among witches, her acting ability was top notch. Might you be willing to lend us some of your strength? Oh my God. Yeah, that, that's brilliant. No, 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 she's done totally well. And I just genuinely can't believe that you were fooling somebody as experienced as Erika. And honestly, I thought somebody as clever as her, she would be able to totally tell that this is a facade, but no, that's the funny thing. Might you be willing to lend us some of your strength, so that my Game Boy's beauty will be preserved? <laughs> I just love how stressed and how regrettable she sounds. <laughs> Truly, it was a great error to invite that busybody as a guest. I understand. Oh my god. I'd like to win this quietly too if I can. Wow. That is so impressive. <laughs> I love it. Love the subtle expression here. For some time now, we have been arguing over whether we should surrender or resist. That's insane. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, and then maintain the facade. Potentially get into the city of books. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, it's probably not going to be possible because of the fact that you need bells. But then again, I mean, Eddie Carr can quite literally get in there. Maybe she can actually provide with intel if they are working together. 
who knows? Maybe Lambda's in the um, city of the Senate, sorry, um, big city of books, and, you know, these keys, or, sorry, these bells, or some sort of, um, you know, means of ID, or, well, means of identification of actually getting in, um, there was that ticket that only um, was valid until the party had began. Um, yeah, so um, what I'm trying to say is that, um, you know, there could be many possible ways, in my opinion, of Eddie Carr actually smuggling them in there. So this is why they need to work together. They need to work together. Yeah, funny that. Yeah, funny that last line, because obviously, um, you know, now she feels as if Beatrice is going to be a genuine ally. <laughs> Yeah, that pleased me very much. So what should I do? This is going to be interesting. Oh, you smart. I don't know, person. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, I would like you to guarantee that we have the necessary time to debate the matter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you've got to do a thing called, like, retreating them so that they don't actually have the pressure of, um, you know, debating whether they should surrender to Lambda or not. Yeah, I would like you to guarantee that we have the necessary time to debate the matter. After all, your ships are surrounding and pressuring us at the moment. <laughs> you are so good. Everyone is so tense at the thought that we may... Yeah, yeah, that we may be attacked at any time and they're falling apart. I love this. Gosh, she is so good. So if you guarantee that we will have enough time to discuss this amongst ourselves, everyone will surely be able to keep their composure during that time. Fair, yeah, furthermore, I have enough time to convince Lady Lambda Delta. God, she is such a good liar. I mean, Jesus Christ. Basila needs to never, ever do anything scandalous with Beatrice. <laughs> or as if, you know, I mean, I think if Basila really ever had a situation where he would need to lie, I think she would be able to probably tell it in 0.1 millisecond. Jesus Christ. But when you think about Yasudai, it does make sense if you ask me why she is so good at lying and, you know, maintaining facades. I mean, Yasuda quite literally is a facade. <laughs> right, what's she going to say? Oh, that's alright. Oh my god. About how long do you need? God, I love that. Would you be gracious and avoid, avoid giving a specific time limit? By the way, I love that Eddie Cast just entirely abandoned everything that Burn has actually told her. Probably just to, you know, instantly attack and instantly get Beatrice and get her guts. No, 
because of the fact that she's scared of Lambda Delta um, actually potentially inhibiting, um, you know, the ability to fight. So, obviously, they've both got to cooperate because La Lambda may turn against her as well. It's brilliant! It's just unbelievable the, the, the enemy could be manipulated this well. Oh, my God. She's so good. She really is. Yeah, would you be gracious and avoid getting a, giving a specific time limit? You are genius. You are nothing short of genius. Seriously. How can you think of an excuse that would be reasonable for every single situation? Seriously. Would you be gracious and avoid giving a specific time limit? If a time limit is imposed, everyone will just fall apart again as the time limit nears. Yeah, possibly leading to a more radical... Oh, yeah, decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, have a point there. Yeah, use your metaphorical analogies because they will obviously strengthen Beatrice's facade. We have a point, you have a point there. The most important thing about a fuse is whether it's lit or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, the length of the fuse is a trivial matter. <laughs> Yes, fully fair. I say that because obviously the most important thing about stress and anger is whether it's there or not. And it doesn't really matter about, um, you know, how long it will take to get to the anger. It just matters whether, you know, the yeah. anger is there or not. I just genuinely can't believe Eddie Carr has actually fallen for this. Even if Eddie Kai is actually maintaining a facade herself here, which I think is uh, is likely, just because of this uncharacteristically trusting nature that she has, um, I think it's just really quite convenient. Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Um... But maybe she's actually deceiving Beatrice and she's going to l launch her first attack the second this is actually finished and Beatrice has thought that maybe she was able to win against her. I love that. In that case, will you give us the time we need? Understood! That's so good. I love this. I guarantee that you have the time to discuss it. Yeah, fair. However, that time won't be unlimited. Yeah, that may be a little bit trickier. But then again, just do really heated debates. Yeah, good one. Good. Those heated debates and the training for now. That is going to be very beneficial. I guarantee that you, you'll have time to discuss it. However, that time won't be unlimited. I'll wait here and listen in on your discussion. Don't... Yeah, I, I'm going to be honest, I think she is going a little bit too far now. I wouldn't, if I was her, I would stop here. Well, as far as that goes, it is true that your mere presence here has anyone, everyone on it. Yeah, I've already made my concessions. Yeah, seriously, yeah, to make the allowances, I like that. Oh god, if that means that Beatrice has some has not only this, but more forced obligations that, you know, she's gonna give to Eddie Carr as a result of her having done, you know, everything uh for Beatrice. Oh god, that just sounds like bad news. <laughs> the embodiment of bad news. I've already made my concessions. Isn't it your turn now? Yes, it is your turn! No no no, don't let her suspect anything. Yeah, they were some distance away from the arbor, but it was just close enough to give a general idea of what was going on. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, that's going to be really hard to actually hide that fact. But then again, I think with really, really good argumentative skills and obviously fakery, you can do it in theory. Yeah, they were some distance away from the arbor, but it was just close enough to give a general idea of what was going on. It was far enough that um, they just might be able to hide the fact that Battler and Lambda Delta were missing. Yes. Yes, just far enough for them to close, convincingly act like this is a white hot argument in a gridlock. I love that. If it were possible, they would rather have kept Eddie Carr at an even greater distance. 
Oh, <laughs> they have planned to set up a seat of honor for their guest. I'm one of the far corners of the garden, mate. Yeah, understandable, but that's just going to be... That's just going to be... I mean... That's just going to scream the word suspicion. Is that some sort of problem? Okay, okay. <laughs> you are being too playful. This facade was brilliant, but I think now it's going a little bit bad. The sooner this, this ends, the better. Don't make a scary, such a scary face. In that case, please wait here. <laughs> you can just so tell how much she is just totally taking the piss here. I love it. Don't make such a scary face. In that case, please wait here. This is um a confidential conference. So you must... uh. <laughs> Please tell me this isn't going to fall to this act. So you must uh, come cl no closer than this line. Oh my god, belt on doing a line in the ground with her foot. Yeah, help them see me in a good line. But then again, though, this could all be passed off as somebody who is genuinely stressed. Yeah, help them see me in a good light. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it will be a powerful weapon in the hands of having more time. Yeah, help them see me in a good light. Yeah, yeah, seriously. The only thing is you can't mess Eddie Carr around because, you know, you have to end this debate eventually because obviously you will all die if you don't. <laughs> help them see me in a good light. If it's clear that I have obtained a generous agreement from you, that will be a powerful weapon in my hands of the defense. <laughs> Could I get a chair? God, please don't tell me this is going to be the end. Yes, yes, of course. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, get your furniture to do it. Good. Yes, yes, of course. Chiesta troops. Bring Lady Eddie a chair and umbrella at once. And a hand towel too. <laughs> I'll have a nice and clean for you. Hmm. Ha <laughs> ha! Love it. Oh, yes. Yes, there have. Yeah, my lady, have there been any developments in our negotiations? Well, you shouldn't speak so fucking loudly. Oh my god, you... She could literally hear every single word, you dumbass. If everything's certain, it's that I'll be winning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you'll be also winning the prize for the best idiot. Why haven't you let somebody have surveillance on her? <laughs> if anything's certain, it's that I'll be winning this year's prize for best actress. Fair enough, yeah. That's our bitch or something. Yeah, fair enough, yeah. Yeah, all we can do is argue fiercely, squabble amongst ourselves. Oh, yeah. Yeah, make it, make it look like things will turn for the worst if negotiations break down. Indeed. Yeah, definitely. This is yet another fight to support Battle's group. Get yourselves ready, everyone, to have the most toxic debate ever. <laughs> I love it. Yes, put up the biggest fight so it realistically... Make it so that Eddie Carr can hear every single word of the conflict. Good one. Yeah, let us argue and insult with all me. <laughs> this is hilarious. I love this. Hmm, <laughs> yes, master. <laughs> oh, God, I feel bad. <laughs> yeah, the sight of God eyes, cheek red and swollen from being pissed. 
<laughs> made everyone snort. But they quickly cover their mouths and put their fingers to their lips. Yeah, then everyone nodded at each other and the fake argument resumed. Hmm. Oh. Oh, God. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, you obviously can't make it seem as if you're laughing, yeah. What if she hears it? Eddie Carr was sitting in the chair that the GS assistant had brought her, filling a goat in on the details of their discussions. Yeah, God, the goats would probably return and tell the rest of the fleet. The fleet would tell Burncastle. Ooh, yeah, I do wonder if this facade could potentially lead to a lot of complications, especially because of the fact that Lambda... You know, they have quite literally just betrayed, you know, the trust of Lambda. That's the problem here. And Lambda is the person who is helping Basila and Angie. I don't know. I, I don't know if this is going to lead to good things. This facade has bought them time, but at the same time, it may really, really make them disadvantaged later on. It's hard to tell. Eddie Carr was sitting in the chair that the GS sisters had brought her, filling a goat um, in all the details of their discussions. The goats would probably return and tell the rest of the fleet. The fleet would tell Burncastle when Burncastle might think of some plan to deal with the situation or give new orders. Let's see. The conversation with the goat ended and it spun around. It would return to the dinghy and report it to the fleet. I see. It slipped out from a rose bush and passed through the garden maze, heading towards the door that led outside. Is it really okay to let that goat reach the boats? Yeah. If it goes back, Eddie Castle Port will reach back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, and isn't it interesting to think that if the report actually reaches Burns ears, then, you know, everything regarding uh, Eddie Carr's competency and also everything regarding Lambda, you know, that's going to be known to uh <laughs> And also her ceremony may entirely be ruined. And if it's realised that Eddie Carr's incompetency, as, you know, obviously not being able to trust everybody fully correctly, you know, is to blame, then, you know, she's going to be killed for it. She really will be. When I say killed, I mean quite literally. <laughs> yeah, the TS is spoke through a secret channel that only they could use. Two seconds. <gasps> They're going to kill it! Oh my god, won't even be a sound! Wow, that's brilliant. It's about to leave Eddie Garth's sphere of awareness. Oh my god. That's amazing. It's just about to leave Eddie Garth's sphere of awareness. Estimated 10 seconds before it reaches the goat boat. <laughs> the goat boatman's sphere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So assassination can be carried out successfully. Oh, yeah, good one, Lady Beatrice. Yeah, your permission to assassinate, if you please. Seriously, though, yeah. Will she hear anything, though? Well, then again, if they do a good assassination, then, you know, there won't be a sound of a body thudding. They will make the sound prevent it. We can do it. Eddie Carr will sense nothing. You do not have permission. Oh, yeah, understandable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but what if they do see the corpse? Yeah, that's fully understandable. Or, you know, with somebody as good as... With reasoning as good as Eddie Cars, you know, she may suspect something. Yeah, you do not have permission. Did you think an envoy would um, leave their ship without setting a time limit? Oh, yeah, that's fully understandable, yeah. Yeah, the fleet probably has orders to attack if it isn't contacted within a certain period of time. Yeah, fully reasonable. That's risky, but at the same time, it's better. That is a fully professional ship as well. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Fair. 
Yeah, the goat passed through the door. Yeah, then after receiving a silent bow from Shannon and Connell, it got on the dinghy and returned to its fleet. Right, um, yeah, I think I'll... Wait, I'll just see... Oh, I've only got a few. I've only got a few lines left of this scene. I didn't realise that. Yeah, I might as well. Um, sorry, I'm tired as fuck at the moment. The fleet would probably um, follow Eddie Cut's orders and stand by until an attack order was given. Yeah, that's reasonable. Yeah. That gave the residents of the Golden Land a chance to assassinate Eddie Cut. God, yeah, that's fair enough, actually. But of course, that wasn't going to be possible, practically speaking. She was at Burncastle's greatest underling, and at which you controlled the truth. Yeah, yeah, that's understandable. Yeah, tricking her was all they could hope for. Anything else would be over. No, they can't kill her, possibly. I mean, then again, though, I mean, you would have thought that Eddie Carr probably only has the body of a human. But then again, being Burns' greatest underling and, you know... The thing is, I mean, the worst thing is, it's all of the ships as well. And the reporting of the goats and just, you know, any sort of suspicion that the artillery may actually get. That is why you cannot kill Eddie Carr. And also because of the fact that she's a witch and her connection to Burn as well. What if that potentially, uh, you know, makes it so that Burn, I don't know, just sends loads of troops over to the Golden Land. Ones that are a lot more deadly than any of these here. It's hard to think, but maybe, maybe they're going to be a lot physically more deadly and they're going to have better proximity as well. Maybe they'll actually be able to go on, um, you know, the Golden Land. Land, I suppose, on the ground. And kill on the ground rather than on ship. Yeah, no, I do see that. Yeah, I literally had two lines there. Yeah, I see got, got quite a lot of time. Oh, shit, wait. Actually, no. This, I can still finish this scene. Yeah, I don't know when to end this, it seems. Why don't you all have a seat too? <laughs> That's hilarious. You need have no worries about us. Oh my god. <laughs> Without any hint that she had just been talking about assassinations, Double O stood upright with her hands clasped behind her back. Hmm. <laughs> Surrender or resist until the end. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, the false argument resumed. Yeah. Yeah, that is a really good question, though, yeah. Just how far and how long would they be able to trick Edika? Yes, the final fight for the Golden Land had already begun. No, seriously. I don't disagree. But... Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, you can count on us to handle things here. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Will they be able to do it? That is the biggest question. Who are we seeing? Please tell me we are seeing Peak Corn Toya. That is. Oh, damn it. Okay, this is just as good, though. I don't really care, but still. <laughs> yep, I think it is impossible to disagree with that. God, what a weird little uh, saving picture. Oh, my God, man. That was really cool today. I loved everything today. I loved, uh, 
I, I think that last thing, the argument with Eddie Carr and, you know, just the negotiations as well, they were hilarious. And, um, you know, just in general, everything um, about, um, you know, the beginning. Oh, my God. The stuff about... Um, not only about, um, you know, Ikko and, um, you know, the really weird mystery with regards to, you know, the fact that Ushidomiya is a name that gives them really weird triggers as well. That's a bit scary. And, um, oh my god, Angie is, that was brilliant. That really, really was. I mean, when is something with Angie not brilliant? This is Omineko we're talking about. But still, that was, that was amazing. That was so, so sad as well. Properly gets you thinking, properly gets you you know, contemplating and obviously emotional as well, good stuff, and, um, yeah, what was, what was the scene after that, um, so obviously we had everything with Angie and then we, um, well, I suppose we just had the beginning of the attack, really, and, yeah, hang on a second. <laughs> 